Hunting in central Illinois, Justin Lindemann and Mark Robinson have had a frustrating season. The rut has been surprisingly slow with very few buck encounters. As they prepare for their late season, they are more optimistic. With an awesome food source on their farm, the two hunters have what the deer are looking for. At least, what they should be looking for. Mark and Justin's hopes are stretched thin. Despite perfect late season conditions, the bucks are still not cooperating. On December 30th, the two hunters head toward their food plot again. Mark with his Hoyt and Justin with a muzzleloader. December 30th, and we are out for another late season hunt. Uh, we're in a redneck blind and one of our food plots. We haven't hunted this farm very much this year, mainly because we haven't gotten pictures of, of too many uh, good bucks, but plenty of food here. We've got some standing beans and some standing corn, and there's quite a bit of tracks out here in the snow. So <clears throat> looks like they've been using this food plot, uh, but we're not really sure if that's been during the daylight or not. So it's about uh, 2.30, so good two and a half hours left hopefully these uh, deer with this with these very cold temperatures hopefully they get up on their feet early um, and make it to this food plot before dark so we'll see it's after four o'clock now so we're down to under an hour left of uh, legal shooting time it's uh, been more of the same for us yet we're, we're yet to see a deer so uh, we are continuing to have some slow late season hunting. Um, it's getting colder here as the sun sun drops, so hopefully we still see some action tonight. That's probably, that can, that's the only drop ton tying buck I've ever shot, but that is probably the biggest deer that I've shot to date. That is, that is a great deer. I just want to take a moment and uh, say how hard Mark and I work to do these late season hunts, uh, putting these food plots in, it's a lot of work. Um, as you can see, deer like these that we have no idea what deer this is or where he came from 
no camera pictures of them, no anything, but you know, they show up. They come from miles around to get this food because it is the only, some of the only food sources around. Um, we're very fortunate to get a deer like this, um, but we work hard to get all this stuff put in just for these types of reasons. I want everybody to have a happy new year and stick with us because we've got three weekends left, I believe, and we'll be back at it uh, trying to find another one. Redneck blinds allow me to hunt more comfortably on cold days, and that means I hunt longer. That is one important key to success. You have to be out there if you hope to fill tags. Frigid Forage Big and Beastie has become one of our go-to food plot products because it is very versatile. It will grow in a wide range of conditions, and there is something in the blend that deer seek out during each part of the season. I've been shooting Hoyt bows almost exclusively since 1997. That is way before I started Midwest Whitetail. The people at Hoyt drew me to the company initially, but their commitment to producing the best, most accurate bows on the market is what kept me there. Many of the employees at Hoyt are bow hunters, so they take the quality of the bows they produce very personally. I'm thinking back and I don't believe I can recall a single time when deer busted me in a ground blind when I was running an Ozonics unit. One of the reasons I hunt from blinds is to contain my scent around food plots and in areas where the wind swirls. Nothing makes this more possible than adding an Ozonics to the gear list. With temperatures hovering near zero, Mike Reed has been seeing a lot of buck activity on his food plots. In fact, he nearly kills his number one buck, a deer he calls 66, on a New Year's Eve hunt. Prompted by the action on Mike's plots, Jared Mills gives up on hunting their new farm and joins Mike for one final buck party. Not willing to give up on his Hoyt altogether, Jared takes his muzzleloader for backup when he heads to a redneck blind for his final hunt of the season. Like when what do you we have to say? Offside blind, there was tw like it's maybe not that cold twenty. Out. We didn't have that many deer come out. Ten since, degrees. Um, Well, it's the afternoon of January 3rd, and I have Drake with me. We're set up in the redneck blind for the evening hunt. We are down at Mike's farm this afternoon. Uh, Drake, Josh, and I decided to make the trip down here. Mike's been hunting hard these past few days. He's got a pretty good late season set up on his farm this year with the food he was able to leave and uh, has a lot of bucks on his list that he wants to take out. And uh, I obviously still have a f uh, tag to fill, so I was more than one to, to come down and, and get a good hunt in and see a lot of deer. And I have both my bow and the muzzleloader. I've actually never killed a deer with a muzzleloader before, but this plot is so big that it it sets up a little bit better for, for gun hunting. and. There's actually six deer out in front of us right now, feeding in the cut corn. They're moving nice and early tonight. I'm still gonna hope that a deer comes into bow range. It's just not as likely in this spot. So we'll see what happens. We got uh, just shy of three hours left and the deer are already up on their feet and uh, looking forward to the sit. Meanwhile, on the other side of the farm, Mike Reed is also starting his afternoon hunt in a redneck blind overlooking a picked cornfield. We're still a little after four o'clock now, and um, it's been relatively slow as expected up until now. We've, um, you know, we had the two fawns out in the pot when we got here. It feels nice and cold still, northwest winds whipping at around 15 miles per hour with occasional gust, and uh, it's nice and cold, so. I expect the deer to start moving here in the next 20, 20 minutes or so. With the bucks already starting to pile out on Mike's plot, Jared is also seeing a lot of deer from his blind. That's it, that's it, uh, crab claw 10. I know, that's it, uh, it's a shriveled up buck.
That's the first time I ever shot a deer at a mother. <laughs> That's the first time I ever shot a deer with a muzzle loader. So that was fun. That's uh that's one of the bucks that Mike and I went over at the cabin. We saw him come out a long ways down the bottom and uh, something spooked them back up to us and I was just hoping they were gonna get in the bow range. I had my bow up the most, most of the time, but he's at like 53, 54. Finally, uh, Drake said he would just use a smoke pole, so I picked it up finally. And uh, I don't know, I mean, as far as I know, I should have put a good shot on him. He ran off and all the deer went down and he veered off hard into the standing corn, so. I don't know, anxious to see uh, where I hit him and hopefully he's not too far. That was exciting though. Like I said, I've never uh, never shot a deer with a muzzle loader, so that was pretty fun. Thanks, Alright, got the other guys. Josh and Mike came and joined us and we came out here with the buggy and, and picked up first blood right where he ran into the standing corn. So uh, everyone's freezing to death out here. Hopefully he's not too far. You can see the blood up on the corn stalk. So we're gonna just start working our way through the corn. Hopefully he's not far. He's walking around. He's right there. Good hey boy. Congratulations. Man, you didn't make it very far. <laughs> I don't think I hit him, boys. That's a, that's a quick trick. You're like, hopefully it's not very far. <laughs> oh, we made it 20 yards. <laughs> oh, he's right here, five yards from me. I think we walked a total of 10 yards, so. That's the kind of track job we want in this cold weather. Shooter McGaver. Both sides are crimped. Yeah, it's crimped and it's almost like a, a funky looking. Well, here he is. As you could uh, see, it wasn't very far at all. I mean, what, 15 yards, 20 yards <laughs> in, into the standing corn. So his tines and his, even his main beams, I've never seen anything like it. Just all kind of shriveled and, and curled. Uh, pretty unique, kind of cool looking deer. So I'll let Mike tell you a little bit about that deer. Yeah, that's right. This deer uh, showed up post rut this year. I don't have a history with him. It's hard to know if I know him from years before. I, I imagine he's had some sort of vitamin deficiency or something and grew abnormal antlers, but um, I actually encountered him, I think it was Christmas Eve. It was, it was right around, it was Christmas weekend. I came on this food plot and he was the only mature buck that came out. And so we put him on this field specifically to target this buck and uh, lo and behold, he came out and made a good shot on him. So it's pretty cool to get him get him out of here. Pretty cool hunt with Drake in the, in the blind. Uh, got lucky that something spooked all the deer up towards us and almost got him in bow range, but uh, getting dark there and decided to grab the muzzleloader and we're gonna get him cleaned up and out of here. It's probably negative 15, negative 20 degrees with the wind chill. So we're all freezing, uh, anxious to get out of here, but a uh, fun night in the stand. Once you release the string, your roll is complete. Now it is up to the arrow and the broadhead to get the job done. This is no place to take chances on unproven quality. I have been to the Easton plant and I have seen the pains that they take to assure that every single arrow is perfect. Why trust your whole season to anything less? Keeping things simple and minimizing gear is always a worthwhile goal. Nikon's Laser Force range finding binoculars bring together the two pieces of optical hardware that most bow hunters carry to the stand. Working hard to contain cost, Nikon is able to offer the Laser Force at roughly the same price you would pay if you bought a rangefinder and a high quality binocular separately. Cabela's offers a wide range of footwear that accommodate all types of hunting, from early season spot and stalk to late season stand hunting. What you wear on your feet has almost as much to do with your success as what you carry in your hands. With an industry leading lifetime warranty, our choice in footwear is simple, Cabela's. Coolers aren't just for the beach or exclusively for family vacation. They are for any time you need to keep something cold. When hanging stands during the dog days of summer, we depend on our American-made Grizzly coolers to keep refreshments cold so we can stick with it until the job is done.
Back in central Illinois, Justin Lindemann and Mark Robinson are once again hunting a corn plot, hoping to repeat their late December success. On this super cold January 5th, Mark carries his Hoyt to the blind. It's uh, getting close to 4.30 now, so we're down to maybe 45 minutes of uh, legal shooting time left. Uh, haven't seen a deer yet. Uh, the last couple of evenings where Justin's been out scouting, they've uh, typically been up on their feet by now, so hopefully they're uh, heading this way and, and get here before, uh, before dark. But. That was pretty exciting. Uh, once again, it came down to the end of the night here. We were running out of time, and uh, we had the first young buck pop out in front of us in the food plot. Uh, and then a couple minutes later, Justin said, uh, there's another buck coming through and uh, said it was a shooter. So I don't know, all I know is it happened quick. I didn't really get a good look at him, but uh, we both think he was mature. It's getting dark in the blind. Uh, we're gonna get out here and um, find the arrow and uh, take, go, go take a look at him, but that was uh, definitely exciting here. Not making it very far, only, only about 50 yards. Heavy, and a lot of mass. Well, we were running out of light there uh, in the recovery, so we went back, got a better light, got him pulled out here, get a better look at him. What an exciting hunt. Uh, a lot like the hunt last weekend, pretty slow to start off with, and then uh, the deer started coming to food. Uh, we realized this is actually a buck we've got a little bit of history with. Uh, we have a couple of sets of pictures of him um, down on a food plot, another one of our food plots that is about a half mile to a mile south of here. Didn't have any pictures of him up here on this plot, but uh, obviously he was kind of in the area and uh, came to this plot tonight, so that's pretty exciting to have some history, uh, really nice, mature, 10 point. Very happy with this uh, buck, especially with bow hunting in the, in the late season cold weather like this. Sleepless nights spent waiting for daylight only to follow a weak blood trail are a thing of the past with the devastating performance of the new Wasp Jackhammer Broadhead. With its one and three quarter inch cutting diameter, this head is the perfect combination of destruction and penetration. Low light accuracy requires a sight with bright pins. Fuse sights have some of the brightest pins on the market, making it possible to take shots right up to the end of legal shooting time with total confidence. No-till planting preserves subsoil moisture and reduces the growth of weed competition. These are two of the main reasons we love using the RTP Genesis for all of our food plot planting. The No-Till Genesis allows us to plant a wide variety of seeds at the proper depth for maximum germination resulting in fast-growing food plots. There are only three ways you can get busted in a tree stand. The deer can smell you, hear you, or see you. To reduce the chances of being seen, we wear the best camouflage we can. Realtree's open patterns perfectly blend into the hardwood timbers that we hunt.
As the late season winds down, our teams stick with it to the end. Mike Reed continues his quest, hunting every evening. Finally, after passing enough bucks to weary any locker plant butcher, Mike decides it is time to pull the trigger. Well, here he is. This is a really cool buck I call the Crab Claw 10. Overall, I really couldn't ask for a better season, and I'm already looking forward to next year. Mike Reed squeezed everything he could out of the season, making it last as long as possible. A wise person once told me that the best way to spoil a great season is to shoot something on the first day. Mike must have been listening as he took his season right down to the wire. At the same time, while hunting in southern Ohio, Tab Justice heads to a redneck blind located right next to an old barn. The picked cornfield that it overlooks has been drawing several deer every evening. So this is my best buck ever, and we've been after him for two or three years now. But I finally was blessed tonight to get him here in the late season. Tab's hunt for Quattro confirms the lesson that has become the backbone of our last six weeks. Find the food, find the deer. The farther you get past the general firearm season, the more daylight active the deer become. And when you combine that with a good food source and cold temperatures, the late season can produce some of the best hunting of the year. Our quest doesn't end when the season closes. There's plenty to do during the winter that will make us more effective when opening day rolls around again. Shed hunting, scouting, and eventually planting our poor man's food plots are all good activities and great excuses to get us into the deer woods. But this time there's an even more significant outcome to our winter scouting. While shed hunting Mike Reed's farm, the team finds out why one of Mike's top bucks, Steve-O, fell off the radar in late October. He was one of the ones we've been watching grow. Oh. So that's the antler I showed you guys last night hanging up on the wall. Amen. The news from my farm is similarly discouraging. My most promising buck, a huge three-year-old mainframe 10-pointer that we saw while hunting the wide 10 in late October, turns up dead. This was a deer with the kind of genetics needed to one day become a world-class giant. It's unlikely that this deer died of anything other than another buck killing it. In a spot like this, I mean, it's a long ways away from any property line. Deer hunting is a roller coaster filled with highs and lows. Caleb Byers endured his share of heartbreaks. Not only did the giant buck he called the goat get away in early November, the huge four-year-old that he passed in late December got hit by a car only two days later. To make matters worse, the goat disappeared from all trail cameras two weeks after the low hit. Now with the season over and the snow gone, Caleb starts blanketing the area, making sure that the huge buck is not rotting in a ditch. It's March 30th today, and as most of you know, I had an opportunity of a lifetime this past season. Uh, a few days ago, I was walking this creek and I actually found the buck that I shot on November 9th and I'm still absolutely in awe. You know, I, I never wanted the journey to end like this, uh, but after months on end of just thinking about this deer every day, losing sleep, um, it, it really consumed my every thought. So, and I knew I owed it to the animal to do everything in my power to try and find him uh, because my gut feeling was really telling me that he was going to be dead. This is an up and down roller coaster of a journey that I will never forget. We have learned the hard way that the bucks we pass up don't always make it to the next season. There is always a risk when we let them go, but that is part of the fun and the challenge. As much as we love hunting them, we also love to see what they grow into if they get some age. We accept the hard losses and move on. You win some and you lose some. They don't live forever. But with the disappointments of bucks lost, there is also a growing expectation of what the next year will bring. We love the anticipation of the season, the ramp up of excitement, almost as much as we love the season itself. New bucks surface to make us forget about the ones that got away. It is all part of the cycle, and soon enough, we will once again be chasing November.